In the past couple of decades, because of advances in medical technology, premature babies like this one never stood a chance for survival. Now they thrive. That same medical technology and expertise is also increasing the rate of survival for these sick babies. Since 1982, hundreds of newborn foals have received treatment at the University of Florida's College of Veterinary Medicine and Teaching Hospital, and they live today. Dr. Ann Caterba has been with the neonatal equine unit since it began. Well, actually, you know, our unit was the first in the world, uh, the first equine neonatal intensive care unit, and we basically showed here that it could be done, and that foals could survive. We had doubled our survival rates um, with instituting that type of care. So we know, um, you know, from our experience here that that could work. Uh, I think it was a combination of having a, a new veterinary school that hadn't been here before offering services to the, a large uh, population of horses in Ocala. It was about the same time that uh, the neonatal intensive care unit in human medicine was really flourishing. So we put the two together, the health center being here, the horse community in Ocala, and us. We sort of said, well, why can't we take care of foals? Dr. Kuturba says the foals that come in sick are not genetically inferior animals. They only got a bad start. The mare might have been sick. There might have been problems with the birth process. And uh, there's nothing inherently the matter with that baby that comes out. It just is making a rough transition to independent life after living in this nice protected uterus. And you know, in those cases, um, it's cost effective to do it. It may be expensive to provide, you know, really intensive care to the very sick uh, baby, but a lot of times that care and that expense is well worth it. They turn out to be quite healthy, happy adults that, you know, perform well. Um, so I think a lot of what we were dealing with was prejudice, tradition, thinking that maybe they didn't need to, or they shouldn't live, they were genetically a problem, but in most of the cases that we're treating, that really doesn't seem to be a problem. In the beginning, a few veterinary students handled the incoming caseload of sick foals, but Dr. Kuturba says the unit rapidly grew as the patient load increased. Now a hundred or more people are needed to assist the veterinary technicians taking care of the foals, and most of that hundred are volunteers. Each year, Dr. Caterva says the equine unit has a volunteer training orientation to teach basic care for foals. So we try to hit the high points, uh, things like how to be safe around the mare and the foal, um, how to restrain the foal so it isn't hurt, but how also not to get hurt themselves. Um, that's an important thing. Uh, how to milk a mare, because if the foal isn't nursing from the mare, then uh, the mare is continuing to produce milk. If that's not milked out, then she dries up, and then the foal doesn't have any milk to nurse from when he's better. So that's a, a crucial thing to know the right technique for doing that. Uh, we teach them how to do IV fluid monitoring to make sure the fluids don't run out or they continue to run at the right um, rate. Uh, we teach them how to do ICUs, which are intensive care monitoring uh, things, how to take a temperature, pulse, respiratory rate, assess the vital signs. Um, so we can see records of that, look for trends. We're not there all the time, but the record keeping is extremely important to see whether there's a trend towards an increasing respiratory rate, which could indicate pneumonia, or an increasing temperature, which could indicate infection. Both of those extremes are not normal, okay? So just note the color of the foal's mouth, okay? Next thing, I don't think she'll let me do it by myself, but go ahead and press The on. average size thoroughbred foal weighs around 110 pounds, which Dr. Caterba says can get to be difficult for volunteers to deal with when that foal is sick. That's why teaching them how to manage a foal safely is so important. That foal may be totally out of control, he may be thrashing, he doesn't know where he is or what he's doing. And that's the four little feet thrashing around can do some serious damage to people if their face is in the way or whatever. So, you know, safety of the volunteers is a real important consideration. The reason I do this is because when they throw their head, I'm not back here to get hit in the, in the cheek or chin or face with their head, which hurts quite a bit. 
but I'm right down here with him. If he jerks, I jerk. The volunteers include veterinary students and pre-veterinary students, horse owners in the community, respiratory therapists and nurses from local hospitals, and even people who've never been around a horse before but want to gain experience around large animals. Lisa Moore is now volunteering for the fifth year and now helps with some of the volunteer training orientations. Yes, I enjoy it a lot. Um, the foals are really great to work with and you also get to learn how to work with larger horses. Um, I learned a lot of um, neonatal medicine from working here. Um, almost everything I know about horses I've learned here, so it's been a great experience. So you're not a horse uh, fanatic coming in going on? No, not really. Baby to tell you the truth, the first time I worked with a foal with a horse at all was at the foal unit in 1985. Moore says most of her volunteer experiences at the neonatal equine unit have been rewarding. We had a foal that um, had botulism one time and the foal was put on a respirator for approximately, I think it was around two weeks, and I sat with that foal quite often and um, it's amazing to see a foal just lying there, you know, almost on death's door and then come in two weeks later and he's running around the stall playing with a friend, you know, so it's a really great experience. Dr. Katerva says volunteers can attend weekly sessions at the vet school to get updates on how the foals are doing and to receive other information. Well, we'd like our volunteers to, you know, learn as much as they can, both about the nursing care and about the disease processes. So we uh, do have meetings uh, every week to provide some information on normal foal problems, um, disease areas that we encounter a lot. Uh, so we hope to, you know, another thing we try to do is give them a, an update on the cases that they may have taken care of one night and they wonder what happened to or they weren't understanding quite what was being done. So we, pr we try to use those sessions each week uh, to update the volunteers and to teach them more about foal medicine. Each year about 65 foals receive treatment at the unit. Not all are foals of thoroughbreds. Volunteers and technicians also see foals from Arabians, quarter horses, miniature horses, and others. They all have one thing in common. They need intensive care. Most have infections, says Dr. Katerva, and are treated with antibiotics and plasma. Many need oxygen and mechanical ventilation for respiratory tract infections. Just a decade ago, most of these foals would have died. Now, the success rate for foals at the neonatal equine unit is extremely high. 75% will go home. I'm Donna Green Townsend reporting on Florida File.